Hey guys, welcome back. On today's episode, we are going to add caching to our blog. So uh, currently we have a bunch of content that are kind of static. For example, our future post section doesn't really change that often. For example, let's say on a regular blog, uh, you are publishing an article or a blog post once a day, maybe every day or every other day. And you might be changing the future posts maybe once a week, right? So there is no reason for us to query the database every single time a user visits our website. So this is a good candidate for caching. Same thing for latest posts. Again, if you are publishing an article once a day, we don't need to query the database every time we get a user visit, right? So we can also go ahead and cache uh, our latest posts. And then maybe we can also go ahead and cache our recommended topics because I don't think this one changes that often as well. Like, let's say for a blog like this one, you might be adding a new topic every, let's say, couple of months, right? Whenever there is a new technology. So the categories are going to be relatively unchanged, unless maybe you have like a new site or something and you have like, you know, things changing quickly. But even then, maybe you still want to cache it for, let's say, a couple of hours a day, which is a good starting point. So let's get right into it. I don't want to talk too much. So caching in Laravel is actually quite easy. One of the easiest things you can do in Laravel. So to get started, first thing I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to extract uh, these queries into their own separate variables instead of doing them inside this return statement. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll take the first one, future posts, and I'm going to store it in a variable also named uh, future posts. And then obviously I'm going to replace it with the variable we created. And I'm going to do the exact same thing for uh, latest posts as well. Now we can, uh, we could have gone ahead and used compact over here, but I'm going to go ahead and keep it the way it is. I think it's a bit easier to see. So uh, in order to perform caching, there are a few different ways you could do it, but there is a caching facade, cache facade, that gives us an easy access to the caching utilities inside Laravel. So first thing, you need to go ahead and import the cache facade, which is going to be inside illuminate support facades. So let's go ahead and add that. So this is the import for it, if you guys want to import it. And it has a method on it, a static method called remember, right? So this is what you call to cache something. So let's go ahead and call that over here. So uh, as its first argument, and uh, let me hover over it, it's going to be basically your cache key. So this has to be a unique value, of course, otherwise you will have clashes, okay? So let's go ahead and give it a unique key. For the key, you can name yours whatever you like. For me, I'm going to basically have it be same as our variable name. Okay, again, we're not going to have a lot of caching, so cached items, so the name isn't that important. But on a larger project, you do want to make sure you have unique values. And then the second argument is going to be the duration. Now, the duration for this is there are a couple of different values you can pass into it. So first one, it's going to be in seconds. So if you want, for example, a couple of minutes, you can say 60 times, let's say five minutes, right? So this would be five minutes, or you can also pass it in a carbon object. So uh, this is also something you could do. For example, you can say now and then add hours, let's say five. So this will cache it for five hours. So if you take a look over here, again, uh, it accepts multiple values, right? It accepts null, int, a daytime interface, a date interval, and then even a closure, right? So we can use multiple values. Now it's up to you which way you do it. Uh, you can definitely do it in seconds. However, generally, if you're not working with caching a lot, you might forget if it's in seconds or minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and use uh, the carbon way. Okay, I think it's a bit easier to understand how long we're caching it. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and say uh, add day. Okay, so I'm going to be caching it for one day. And then the last argument it's going to be a closure or basically a callback that gets the cached results. Okay, so let's go ahead and pass it in an anonymous function. So inside this anonymous function uh, or a closure, you need to return what needs to be cached, right? Which is basically this query over here, right? This eloquent query we just wrote. So I'm going to go ahead and say return this item. So that is basically how you can cache items. And the way this remember works is it comes in checks the cache key if it's inside if you have it or not so if it's a hit obviously we load it from the cache if it's not it will go ahead and run this closure get the value and then cache it for the ttl we have provided and ttl stands for time to live okay so basically the how long it should be cached so it will basically store it in the cache and set that as the time 
for it. Okay, so now that we have this, we can basically copy paste this for our uh, latest post as well. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll just uh, update the return statement. And that's it, guys. Like, this is this is how easy it is to do caching in Laudable. Super easy. And now for the date, I think for our future post, I'm going to also keep it a day. Okay, you can obviously play around with this. Uh, with Carbon, there are a couple of different options you have. So you can do uh, at minute, right? You probably want to at least do a couple of minutes. Uh, you can also do add hour okay so it's up to you guys how you want to do it uh, it's flexible okay so for now i'm going to keep it as at a day i think that's a good starting point again uh i don't think it's going to be changing that much right so once a day so this is pretty good and you can also add some sort of uh, event listener on your model and then maybe clear the cache let's say once you publish new posts right so that's something you can also do so you can cache it infinitely and then clear the cache mm -hmm whenever a new article is published that's also something you can do but i'm not going to be covering that today okay so now that we have the caching guys let's go ahead and see if it's working or not so i'm going to go ahead uh if you guys remember i'm going to open up the queries so we can see what is happening so we still haven't cached it so this is going to be the first one i'm going to reload the page and we get five queries okay i think one of them got cached i could be wrong I'm not sure if I reloaded it when I added the future post. But as you can see, we are still doing one query. If I reload again, now we are not getting any queries for our post, right? So basically, that cached the results, right? And if I keep reloading it, we are down to three queries. So thanks to caching, we have basically reduced unnecessary calls to our database. Very nice. Now, if you want to clear the cache, let's say you're doing local development. And in this case, for example, if I were to change this 9 to, I don't know, 20, and if I reload it, right, nothing is happening. We're not actually calling the database, right? So it's loading it from the cache. And if I scroll down, it is still uh, 9. I think I made a mistake over here. I'll fix it in a second. Uh, yeah, it's the cache key. So let's fix this. I forgot to update the key. But even if I update it, uh, let's set this back to 9 for a second. So this is because this is the first time, it will obviously call the database. And if I reload a second time, it goes back to 3. So now it's loading it from the cache. But so let's say I change this 9 to 20. Right, so now we are showing 9. If I reload, it's still showing 9. So if you want to clear the cache during local development, uh, you can open up your terminal and just type in php artisan cache clear. And it will go ahead and clear your entire application cache. Okay, now you do need to be careful with this if you're on production, but uh, you know, on local development, it's totally fine. So I'm going to run that. And if I reload, guys, just take a look at this number three. If I reload, it goes back to seven. Okay. And of course, uh, if I scroll down, this should now be 20 articles, as you can see. Of course, I'm going to revert it back to nine. Okay. So that's the basics of caching in Laravel. And it's a good way to optimize your applications or a good starting point. Next up, uh, I mentioned we could also cache these article, sorry, these article categories or post categories. So let's go ahead and also cache these guys. Now, I believe we need to do that inside our uh, post controller. So let's go ahead and open it up. This is where we are getting the categories. So let's go ahead and cache it right over here. So I'm going to say uh, categories and we are going to use the cache uh, facade again. Now, there are a couple of different cache classes. So there is one from Doctrine common cache there is one from symphony make sure you are importing the illuminate support facades again let's do uh, remember and then for this one i'm gonna say categories and for ttl let's do carbon now and then let's say add days for this one i'll uh, honestly i uh, cache it for three days now we do need to be careful with this one so this is a little bit annoying if you add a new category and then obviously this might not get updated for three days, right? So uh, that is something to be careful about if you choose a very long time for your TTL. So you may need to clear the cache yourself manually, okay? Or write some sort of code so that it clears the cache automatically when there is a new category. So something to be aware of, guys. And then for this one, we just pass in a closure, just like we did for uh, the home controller. And I'll cut this. I'll put it inside here. So let's do return. Let me format this. And then inside here, we can say categories. And that should get the job done. So I'll open up this one. Uh, we have 11 queries. I'll do a reload. 
still 11. If I reload again, it should be down to 10, I think. Yeah, as you can see, we are down to 10. So this one got cached and it's going to remain in the cache for three days. If I keep reloading, obviously uh, nothing happens. Okay. And if we want to test it out, we can run this PHP artisan cache clear again. And we should now be up to 11. If I go to the homepage, we have eight queries. If I reload, we go down to three. So that's it for caching, guys. A very simple to do inside Laravel. And generally, if you have, you know, if you want to do it, it's as simple as I showed you. Now, next thing I want to cover, guys, is regarding the cache driver. So I didn't really cover this, uh, but if you open up your .env file, there is a section for cache driver, and you can set this up to your liking. Now, by default, it is always going to be fall, and using fall is a good starting point. So it's obviously going to be a lot faster than querying the database, especially if you have a very large database. However, you might face some issues as your application grows. And when I say like very large application, if you have like a couple of users, it's not really important. Fall should be enough. In those cases, maybe you can use something like Redis or Memcache. Okay. And the available options are inside the cache config file. So it's going to be under config cache. And if you guys just open up the file and scroll down, you can see all the supported versions right over here. There is APC, uh, array, database, file. I think database is probably going to be the slowest of these. Then file is a good starting point. And the fastest are probably going to be a memcached or memcached, which is, I think, stands for memory cached, Redis, and then maybe APC and Octane. Okay. But file is totally fine for small projects. And you can definitely start with that. And if you're using something like Laravel Forge, it sets up Redis for you out the box so it's very easy to use so you can go ahead and use that if you're deploying your applications using a uh, lot of old forge but yeah i think you can start with file and then on a production application if you feel the need for it maybe you can use redis or memcached so that's it guys uh, and again to change it very easy just update this with the value mentioned here right so in this case let's say you want to use redis just set this to redis and then down here, you of course need to set your uh, Redis host, password, and the port, right? This is the default port, so if you're not changing it, you don't need to change that. Uh, you probably also don't need to change the Redis host, uh, unless you're in the cloud or maybe you have a different IP, and then uh, you just need to set the Redis password, okay? So just as easy as that. And again, you can change it on the fly. That's the beauty of Laravel. It's very easy to change the cache driver. So you don't really need to worry about it. If you're using file and at some point you start to feel like it's not enough, you can just as easily change it to Redis, right? In a day. So that's the beauty of it. So that's it guys for today's episode. I hope you learned something new. If you have any questions, you can ask me in the comment section below. And I see you guys on the next episode. Have a great day. Bye.